Dear students, today we are going to discuss a new topic in grade 10. That is the ninth unit, resultant force. Here I have shown you different instances in which different forces are applied on different objects. So in the first instance you can see there are two opposite forces applied on this box. The two forces are applied in opposite directions. So the, the box will be moved if there is an unbalanced force acting on the object. In the next instance you can see a force of X is applied on an object which is on a surface and against the motion of the object a friction force is applied. So you have learned about friction. So the difference in between the two forces, the difference in between the force applied and the friction force will be the resultant force applied on this object. And here on the trolley, two forces are applied towards the same direction and these two forces are equal. So, not equal. They are equal in direction. Not equal in magnitude but equal in direction. Both forces are applied towards the same direction. So, in our day-to-day -day life, we experience different, in different instances where this type of forces are applied on objects. So, the term resultant force stands for the single force that can be applied instead of a set of forces which can come up with the same result. Now you know, for example, when two forces are applied to the same direction on this trolley, if we can apply a single force which is equal to the sum of these two forces, that will be the resultant force applied on the trolley. If I repeat, the resultant force is the single force that can be applied instead of a set of forces applied on an object to come up with the same result. We'll discuss about different instances where we can talk about a resultant force. First we will consider the resultant of collinear forces. The term collinear stands for the forces acting on the same line. Collinear acting on the same line. So if we think about collinear forces, we can classify them into two types. First one, collinear forces acting on the same direction. Here I have given an example. There are two forces acting on the same object and these two forces are acting on the same line. Therefore, they are collinear. And you know the arrowhead shows the direction of the force applied. The two forces are collinear as well as they are applied towards the same direction. Therefore, simply we can take the resultant of collinear forces acting on the same direction is equal to the sum of the two forces. Very simple. So here we can write the resultant force is 3 newton towards this direction plus 2 newton towards the same direction. Therefore the resultant force is 5 newton and it is also to the initial direction. Right? Then here in this example Two forces are applied on the same line of action of force and on the same point of application of force. There are also, these are two collinear forces acting on the same direction. 
Therefore, we can say that the resultant force is equal to the sum of the two forces because they are acting along the same direction. So, instead of two forces, 3 newton and 1 newton, we can apply a single force of 4 newton towards the same direction. So, the resultant force is 4 newton. Right? Then, there are collinear forces which are acting in opposite directions. So, there, here you can see a 3 newton force as well as a 1 newton force is applied on this object, but these are opposite in direction, but they are collinear, acting on the same line. So, in this instance, you know, simply uh, when two people are, this person is a uh, Uh, pushing the object towards this direction and the other person is pushing the object towards this direction. So the resultant will be equal to the difference in between the two forces and the direction of the force will be the direction of the greater force. So here the resultant can be written as here the greater force is 3 newton. It is applied towards this direction. And the, the other force which is applied to the opposite direction is 1 newton. Therefore the resultant can be written as 2 newton towards the direction of the greater force. Therefore the resultant force will be 2 newton towards this particular direction. Okay. So... There may be another instance where here a pull is applied towards this direction and another pull is applied towards the opposite direction. In this instance also we can get the same answer but the direction will be different. So the resultant will be 2 Newton towards the greater force that means towards this direction. So the resultant of collinear forces acting along the same direction will be equal to the sum of the two forces and the direction will be the initial direction. The resultant of collinear forces acting on opposite directions will be equal to the difference in between the two forces and the direction of the resultant force should be the direction of the greater force. Next we'll discuss about resultant of parallel forces. So definitely if the two forces are parallel to each other they should be acting towards the same direction. Here two, two Newton forces are applied on this object. Therefore in such an instance that means the resultant of Two parallel forces will be equal to the sum of the two forces. They are again the direction is the initial direction. So here we can write the resultant force is equal to 2 Newton towards this direction and another 2 Newton towards this direction. Therefore altogether 4 Newton to the same direction. Therefore resultant of two parallel forces acting towards the same direction will be the sum of the two forces. For example, we can take a bullock cart which is pulled by two bullocks. So the two bullocks are parallel to each other and the force applied on the cart is equal to the sum of the two forces applied by the two bullocks. Next we will consider the resultant of two inclined forces. Inclined means there is an angle in between the two lines of action of these two forces. Two forces P and Q are applied on this object. If we extend the two lines of action of forces like this, we can see that there is a particular angle. Therefore, these are known as inclined forces. So here 
at this level you are not supposed to calculate the resultant force but remember in this instance the resultant force will lie in between the two forces the resultant force will lie in between the two forces for example you take a stone and you tie up two threads on it one is pulled towards this direction and the other one is pulled towards this direction and the stone will be pulled towards a direction in between the two threads or the two lines of action of force so i have come up with all the components in uh, unit 9 so we have discussed what is meant by resultant force uh, what is the resultant force of collinear forces which are acting towards the same direction and which are acting towards opposite directions and what is the resultant of two parallel forces and uh, finally I told you the resultant of two inclined forces lie in between the two forces, two lines of action of force. So that's the end of unit 9. We will meet soon with chemical bonds.